<laughs> find just a word with the families of the men and women. Find just a word with the families of the men and women of our military, State Department, and other agencies of the government serving here in Iraq. Your loved ones made history yesterday. Your loved ones made history yesterday, and it's your support that keeps us going. Thanks for your sacrifice. There's General Casey. General Casey, this is Brian Whitman at the Pentagon. Can you hear me? Hello, Hello Brian, Brian Whitman. How are you? Doing fine, Boy. General, and uh, again, thank you very much. We know that you are very busy. You have a lot of things that you have to do, and, and taking time out of your schedule today to spend uh, 30 minutes with us or so here is just greatly appreciated. We have a pretty big uh, uh, representation of uh, the Pentagon Press Corps here today, and uh, I know they want to ask you a, a lot of questions, so I know you... Uh, want to start off with an overview of what happened yesterday and some of the, uh, the highlights of that. So why don't I just turn it right over to you so, and then we can get into some questions. Okay, Brian, Brian yeah, I, I just have, have a, 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 a short, short statement, statement here that, that I'd, I'd, I'd like, like to share, share with, with you, you and, and then we'll, 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 we'll take, take your questions. questions. First, First of all, all the, the Iraqi, Iraqi people, people had a great, great day, day yesterday. yesterday. It's, it's the, the third, third national, national poll that they've, they've done, done this year, year. And, and in every uh, successive, successive event, event. The, the turnout has, has grown, grown larger, and the violence has grown lower. And yes, yesterday, uh, the projections are that the turnout will be in the 65 to 70 percent range, and the levels of violence were, both, were below both January and October. The Iraqi security forces also uh, performed superbly across Iraq as they maintain security on the polling sites. It's the third election I've seen, and, and I have seen improvement in the, in the quality of the planning and execution of the security forces every time. And in the last uh, 10 days, I traveled around Iraq visiting the governors, uh, chiefs of police, election officials, and everywhere that I went, uh, I left with the feeling that uh, we were dealing with confident and competent Iraqi leaders who had this election under control. Uh, lots of great stories from yesterday, but I think the one that really set the tone for the day uh, happened in a polling station in Karma, which is a place between Baghdad and Fallujah. An IED blew down the wall of the polling station in the middle of the night. Uh, the Iraqis fixed it and were open for business and polling at, at 7 o'clock in the morning. Uh, that was the spirit that led the day. Uh, the second thing I'd like to, to just share with you, having been at this as, for 18 months now, uh, is what was, has been accomplished here, not just over the last 18 months, uh, but really in less than three years, is unprecedented. And if you think about it, uh, Saddam Hussein was still ruling Iraq three years ago and tyrannizing the Iraqi people. In the less than three years since then, the Iraqis have been liberated, they've taken their sovereignty, they've brought in an interim government, elected a transitional government, peacefully passed power, written a constitution, approved the constitution, built an army of over 200, an army and the police forces of over 200,000, got them into the fight, and yesterday they elected an assembly that will form a government to lead them for the next four years. All of this against a ruthless and resilient insurgency. So a remarkable effort here uh, in less than three years. And every man and woman, woman who has served here or fought here owns a piece of this success, and particularly the loved ones of our fallen comrades. Third point I'd make is that as great a day as it was, we still have a lot of work to do in 2006. Uh, the government's got to get formed, uh, take the reins, and, and get on with governing. And I think, as, as we all, have all been quite clear about, uh, there are some tough political and eco economic challenges that Iraq has to deal with, uh, not just next year, but, but over, the, over the coming years. Uh, there will be a debate in the Assembly about the Constitution, about whether or not to amend it, and there will be a, a debate, no doubt, on federalism. And I certainly expect uh, these to be uh, heated and, and probably divisive. And as all the insurgents haven't uh, given up using 
uh, violence uh, to get their political ends, I expect uh, that this, these debates will be done against a, a background of violence. Uh, so lots of tough work to do here, and we should not expect the insurgency to just go away because of yesterday's great success. But we should expect it to be gradually weakened and reduced as more and more Iraqis adopt, adopt the political process and the root causes of the insurgency are addressed by the new Iraqi government and by the coalition. So uh, y yesterday was a day to celebrate, but we still have, have a way to go here. Finally, I'd like to close just with a word to the families of the men and women of our military, State Department, and other agencies of the government that are serving here in Iraq. Your loved ones made history yesterday, and it's your support that keeps us going. Thanks for your sacrifices, particularly through these holiday periods. For us, helping give the gift of freedom for Iraq in these last elections uh, will make for a pretty happy holiday season even without being with you all. So thank you all very much uh, for your, your continued support and happy holidays to everybody back there in the Pentagon. Thank you. Well, thank you, General, for that overview. And uh, we'll get started with a, a few questions here then. Uh, Charlie? Uh, General Charlie Ollinger with Reuters. Uh, I've got three quick questions, uh, two of them I think the American public is very, very interested in this. Number one, how many U.S. troops and other coalition troops are there in Iraq today? When do you expect firm date to get down to the baseline, 138,000? They say here that'll be rather quickly. And uh, when do you expect to begin, you might be able to begin going beyond that? In other words, withdrawing troops. Yeah, okay, Charlie. Right now, I think we're, we're at about 170,000. Uh, and I think you know that uh, we are, we will we'll enter into another uh, transition process here uh, in, over the next weeks. Uh, and the two extra battalions that we brought over for election security uh, will leave in January. Uh, so, so we should be down to uh, a, the, the, the old baseline there, I'd say, probably around the, the end, of, end of January. Um, maybe early February. But as I said, there, there's a ro another rotation that's going to take place here uh, that'll go through February uh, so that the number will stay elevated as units come in and, and units go out. And then, as I've said all along, Charlie, we're, we just had the elections, we're doing our assessments, uh, and I'll make some recommendations uh, in the coming weeks here about whether I think it's prudent uh, to go below that, uh, the baseline that you spoke of. When, excuse me, when you say 170,000, you mean 170,000 U.S. troops that you're talking about overall total, and could you? That's total, Charlie. That's, you asked for coalition, and that's what, that's what we got. That's the total number. U.S. How many are U.S. of the 170? I'm sorry. Uh, I'd say, I think we're probably about 150 uh, today. Okay, uh, Barbara. General Casey, Barbara Starr from CNN. You've spoken a little bit about the insurgency, but um, what's your assessment right now? The chairman had said several weeks ago that they had the same capacity to launch attacks that they had a year ago. Do you think that is still the case? Do you think there's a turning point in the insurgency? What do you militarily expect in post-election now? Um, first of all, Barbara, I think, I think you know that, that the insurgency is, is not a homogenous group. Uh, we look at it with the terrorists and the foreign fighters, uh, Saddamists, and uh, a larger group, the, the predominant group there, the uh, Iraqi rejectionists. Uh, we, our operations uh, over the, the fall here uh, have had a great impact on that insurgency, particularly on the terrorists and the foreign fighters. I think you'll recall the operations in the north in Talafer, uh, where we took away a major transit point for foreign fighters and suicide bombers coming uh, from uh, Syria into northern Iraq to Mosul and down the Tigris Valley. Uh, in October, we began a series of operations in the western Euphrates Valley. 
designed to set the conditions for the people in Anbar province to vote. And I'm very happy to report that we expect the turnout in Anbar province uh, in these elections uh, to be in the 45 to 50 percent range, uh, which is a huge uh, jump from wh where they have been in the past uh, two elections. But our operations, in addition to doing that, have also restored Iraqi control to that Syrian border. And, and we have disrupted the facilitation network uh, that al-Qaeda used to bring suicide bombers and foreign fighters from the border uh, with Syria down the Euphrates Valley and into car, bo into car bombs in, in Baghdad. Uh, to give you some indication of the effectiveness of that, in, November, uh, in June, last June, there were over 60 uh, car suicide attacks across Iraq. Uh, in November, there were 26. Uh, in December, we're averaging uh, less than one a day. Uh, so we believe that we, our operations out there have, in fact, uh, had, had an impact on that. So now you ask, what do I expect the insurgency to do after the uh, elections? Uh, the answer is on the terrorist and foreign fighter side, I, I expect them to, to attempt to resume uh, attacks against civilians and, and us and Iraqi security forces in an attempt uh, to discredit the process, an attempt to demonstrate that they are still uh, a strong and a factor to be reckoned with. Uh, we will continue, obviously, with, with our operations with the Iraqi security forces uh, to, to frustrate them in doing that. Uh, the rest of it remains, remains, remains to be seen. And there was, uh, again, good participation. And uh, we will continue to dialogue with the uh, Sunni leaders and Sunni groups, and in fact, with all Iraqi groups, uh, to continue to, to bring people away from the insurgency and into the political process. Can I just follow up briefly? Do you subscribe to the notion that the Ba'athists entered into some sort of agreement, essentially, during the election to reduce their violence, but yet they will continue on their own two-track um, uh, strategy of both political and violent activity. In other words, do, do you think there is a turning point yet in the Ba'athist portion or the Saddamist portion of the insurgency? Barbara, I think it's too early to tell. I, I, I certainly understand why you're asking the question, and I'm asking myself the same question. Uh, but I think it's, it's too early to tell. We'll just have to wait and see. But I, I think what you'll see is is folks trying to play, use both, both means to achieve their ends. And not renouncing violence totally, uh, but also working within the political process. So w it'll be a much more complicated situation. Over here, Brett Baer. Hey, General, Brett Baer from Fox. Uh, I want to draw you out on another topic, if I could. Um, the new Army field manual, we're told, is being circulated around. Have you seen it, and have you weighed in on it? I have not uh, seen it yet, Brett. Okay. Can I ask you a question about detainee operations really quickly? Do you feel that uh, treating enemy combatants uh, the same way, granting them the same rights as POWs, will somehow hinder the U.S. efforts to gather intelligence against terrorists? Brett, I think, I think you know, we treat all of our uh, detainees uh, with, with dignity and, and, and with respect. Um, and, and so I, uh, I, I understand the debate that's going on back there, but uh, you know, I, I think uh, it will help us uh, as an institution, uh, particularly with the Army here, uh, to, to deal with all uh, detainees uh, with dignity and, and respect. Uh. General Tom Bowman with the Baltimore Sun. I wonder if you could talk a little bit about when the Iraqis can take the lead in the, uh, in the fight. Um, we were first told that they could do so by the end of 2005, and then General Abizaid uh, amended that to the spring or summer of 2006. And now this new national security plan for victory in Iraq says the Iraqis can take the lead in, quote, the medium term, end of quote. How do you define the medium term? Is that one, two, three years or longer? Uh, Charles, what, a couple of uh, dimensions to this. One is the, the Army, and the, the Army uh, is, is moving into the lead as we speak. Uh, today there is one division of the Iraqi Army, four brigades, and over 30 battalions that are actually in the lead. 
And as we look at the readiness projections coming up from our transition teams and the Iraqi commanders, uh, we expect that process to continue through the summer uh, and, and into the, uh, into the in latter part of this year. I think you'll see the smaller units, uh, the brigades uh, coming online uh, in a fairly large way by the summer. And I think the divisions uh, you'll see in the lead here probably uh, in, in the late fall and end of the year. So we're, we're making very good progress there. Uh, the, other, the other part of this transition, though, is, is a police transition. And putting the police uh, in, position, in the position and bringing the security situation uh, to the point where the police can take charge of maintaining uh, internal security across Iraq. And that I think we're going to start seeing in the late, latter part of 2006 and into the early part of, of 2007. So the bottom line generally how I see, uh, see this move in. Do you think Iraqi security forces can take the lead in total probably in 07 sometime? Um, it, it will depend on, on the ministerial capacity that, uh, that we can build here over the next two years with the new ministers. Um, but, but I wouldn't say that that is, out, that is out of the question. And I guess just so we're clear, what we say, when we say in the lead, we mean, mean putting them in charge still with our transition teams and still with our enabling support. So it, it's different than being operating totally independently. Support take you? Will that be two, three, four years or longer into the future? I couldn't quite hear. I'm sorry, you broke up a little bit. The enabling support from the U.S., how long will that take you into the future? Two, three years or longer? Uh, difficult to say, but what I can tell you is that you should, we should all expect it to the amount of support we provide to progressively reduce a, as they get progressively better, and that's, that's the overall plan. Uh, General, hi, David Cloud with the New York Times. You said you're going to be making some recommendations over the next few weeks, I think, about troop reductions. Can you give us a better sense of, of how you're going to assess that realistically when, you know, as you say, violence may go up post-election? How, how, how are you going to assess that, and, and what's the scale of the reductions you're considering? Uh, I, I'm, not, I'm not going to talk about the specifics of, of the reductions. Uh, we, we continually assess the security situation uh, in, in terms of uh, the capacity of the insurgency, uh, the capacity of the Iraqi security forces uh, all across the country. And, and we, we will make, uh, we'll continue with those assessments, update them uh, based on what we see coming out of these elections and, and what intelligence we're getting in the aftermath of the elections uh, and, and make our recommendations. But I'm not going to get any more specific than that here. Gordon. Hi, uh, General. It's Gordon Lubel at Army Times. I just wonder if you could kind of elaborate a little bit more on when we always talk about in the lead and, and, and side by side and all that. When, when, from a practical standpoint, when troops, when Iraqi security forces are in the lead, um, does that, what does it mean in terms of the role that the U.S. forces are playing? Are they a block behind? Are they in the ready rooms, so to speak, like working with you? What, can you just kind of explain briefly, like, what exactly that means from a practical standpoint? Sure. When, when an Iraqi unit is in the lead, they do the, the mission planning. Uh, they conduct the mission. Uh, they do that with our transition teams who are supporting and assisting. assisting. Uh, if, if they need a particular enabler for a mission, uh, for example, they may, they, they may do a, an air assault, and so we might provide them helicopter support to move them. Um, but, but they are provided other enablers on a mission-specific uh, basis. And then we have uh, quick reaction forces that uh, are available not only to Iraqi forces but to our forces in the area uh, that can help them out uh, if, they're getting, if they get in trouble. But, but I, the, the important thing, I think, to take away from this is they are doing the missions uh, with our uh, transition team assistance, uh, and, it, and they may operate with U.S. forces or they may operate independently. And just to give you an example, uh, of the 1,700 company size or larger, so operations involving 100 or, or, or more folks, that we conducted in November of the 1,700, only 200 were U.S. only. The rest were either combined operations with uh, coalition and Iraqi forces 
or independent Iraqi operations. So th they're, they're taking a, a, a much larger role here. Uh, General, can you bring us up to date on the ongoing investigation by Admiral um, Van Buskirk on the information operations? And can you say whether or not uh, any of the program has been either stopped or halted temporarily until the investigation is done with? Uh, Scott has a, uh, I think, about another week or so to complete the investigation. Uh, I, I talked to him and gave him some guidance when he started it, uh, and he's moving out uh, conducting the, the election. Uh, we did a preliminary assessment uh, sh shortly after the, the, the stories came out, and we concluded that we were operating within our authorities uh, and uh, the, the appropriate legal procedures, and so we, we have not suspended any of the uh, processes up, up to now. Uh, but it, Scott has the direction that if, if at any time through, it, it, through the course of his investigation he comes across something that we're doing that makes him feel uncomfortable, that he should bring it directly to me and we'll, uh, we'll evaluate it and take appropriate action. So I'd expect to hear back from Scott here in a week or so. Just to follow up, he has not yet obviously then brought anything to your attention that has, to date, then that has caused you to suspend anything? He has not. Go ahead, Jim. Uh, General Jim Mannion from Agence France Press. Uh, recently, uh, Secretary Rumsfeld have, has talked about divisions emerging within the insurgency. Uh, can you elaborate on what he's talking about, what kinds of divisions you're seeing? Well, the kind of divisions that we're seeing uh, played out, uh, frankly, in, in Ramadi is, is probably a good example. Uh, Al-Qaeda uh, insurgents in the area uh, tried to stop the local people of Ramadi from participating in the election process. Other insurgent groups uh, came together and, and frustrated Al uh, the Al-Qaeda in Iraq's attempt uh, to halt those elections. So we're seeing uh, the political process, and particularly these elections, uh, causing tensions uh, within the insurgents. I think you know that uh, none of these insurgencies have, have common ends. Uh, the only thing they agree on is that they want us out. Uh, so there are, there are exploitable fissures uh, between the different elements of, of the insurgency. Let's go over here to Pamela. Uh, General, this is Pam Hess with UPI. Could you give us more detail on that um, Ramadi? What was it that Al-Qaeda in Iraq was trying to do and, and how were those uh, ends uh, flouted by the insurgents? Would you also talk about um, uh, something I read that happened in Kirkuk where a, a hospital was attacked and an insurgent was freed? I think it was a, a few days ago. Um, R Ramadi uh, is a it was one of our, our, our toughest cases. And we worked very hard uh, with the operations out in the western Euphrates and some, some pre-election op operations in Ramadi uh, to weaken uh, the al-Qaeda elements of the insurgency there so that the uh, less strong elements of the insurgency would have the opportunity to vote. I mean, al-Qaeda engages in just outright in intimidation and murder uh, to keep people from participating in the political process. And they were doing that, and the, some of the other insurgents groups, uh, primarily the Sunni insurgents groups, came together and, and, and fought back against them. Uh, our operations obvi obviously helped, but they, they, they seemed to come together uh, with the people and the leaders of Ramadi, and decide, collectively they decided they were going to vote and they were going to protect themselves during that vote. And like I said, I optimistic, I'm hearing a turnout in the 45 to 50 percent range, uh, which, I, uh, which I believe will be a very, very positive step for the people of, of Anbar. I'll also say that there was an awful uh, good turnout in the western Euphrates Valley, and that voting would not have taken place had we not gone in and pushed al-Qaeda uh, out of the uh, small villages that, that dot the Euphrates River from the Syrian border down to Ramadi. Uh, the, the second question, Pam, on, on, the, on the hospital, 
Uh, I don't have a lot of information on that. Uh, the information I, I do have was that a, a group of insurgents uh, went, went after a hospital uh, and, and basically uh, picked up one of their own who, who was, had been wounded in an operation and, and took him away. Uh, but I don't, I don't have any more specific, uh, specifics on that. I have time for just a couple more here. Let's go to Vicki. Uh, General Vicki O'Hara with National Public Radio. Do you have the insurgents that you say took on al-Qaeda in, Ram in, in Ramadi in the interest of getting out the vote, have they indicated what sort of outcome they are looking for politically in order for them to um, leave off the violence from this point on? Uh, not those uh, insurgents particularly, but I will tell you, uh, in general, the people, the, particularly the, the Sunni folks that I talk to, uh, want a government that, that is seen as broadly representative of all the different ethnic and sectarian groups of, of Iraq. And, and that is, is the one thing that I think that will really help pull this country uh, come together. In, in relatively short order, but uh, we'll see how the government formation uh, comes out. But that, that that's what they're looking for. They need to feel that whatever government there is uh, has their interests at heart and will represent them uh, appropriately. Mr. Hartman. General Brian Hartman with ABC News. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about how uh, any of Iraq's neighbors uh, might have been meddling in the elections and just in general? Uh, what Iraq's neighbors have been up to uh, causing trouble for you and the coalition? Mm. Uh, the neighbor that probably uh, was most involved in, as you say, meddling in, in the election uh, was Iran. Uh, I, I don't have you know, hard smoking gun type evidence uh, but the intelligence we get t uh, tells us that they invested fairly heavily uh, in, the, the, in supporting uh, political parties supportive of Iraq in the South. Uh, and I, I believe that they will continue to attempt the influence or to influence the formation of, of this government over the coming weeks uh, to, to get a government that, that they believe is uh, supportive of their interests. Uh, and that is that is worrisome, and it is a challenge for us. Uh, on the other side, uh, the, the Syrians appear to be taking uh, some action uh, to pick up foreign fighters and suicide bombers uh, coming through Syria. Uh, we, we have indications of, of a few, not not a, a major change in their operating style, but we have indications of a few measures. Uh, that may, in fact, have helped uh, limit some of the uh, suicide bombers and foreign fighters coming through Syria. We'd clearly like to see more of that. Uh, the other neighbors are actually uh, fairly supportive. Uh, General, we really have reached just about the end of our time, and I wanted to give you the last word here. So uh, if, uh, if you have anything that you'd like to close with, let me turn it back over to you. Thanks very much. And I just tell everyone that you could not be prouder of the men and women of the armed forces of the United States and, frankly, all the coalition nations over here. What they've done here over the last, as I said, less than three years to bring Iraq to this point is unprecedented. And it would not have happened without the courage of the Iraqi people and leadership and the courage, commitment, uh, and drive of the members of the American Armed Forces. So thank you all very much. Happy holidays uh, to all the families back there. And we, we had a great day yesterday. On to 2006. Thanks. Thank you, General.